going to create a Google Calendar inside of a Google Sheet. Because we can. Come on. Uh, let's just start out in B1. I'm a B1 kind of guy, at least for this sheet. Uh, let's do some data validation. We need data validation, add a rule. This needs to be a date. Okay? And in fact, let's reject it if it's not a date. Reject the input. So if I put blue right there, well, that's not valid. But if I double click it, and then I click January 1, hey, that is valid. That's what we're looking for. And then let's just merge and center this stuff right here so that we got that front and center. You know, let's put that up to like 22 font. And one more thing, let's go to format theme and instead of this standard one, let's just use this next one down. That'll give us some darker blues to work with. And we'll make this dark blue as our primary font color just because now back up here to your January 1st cell. And you know, this could be January 24th if you wanted it to be, but we're gonna be normal and create months that start on the first day of the month and this one on the first day of the year. You can also incidentally type this in just like so. So if you wanted to do next year's, there you go. And uh, we don't want it to display like that though. So if you open up the uh, format number custom date and time, it's right here. We can just do what? We want the full month name. Apply that, we got January. You know what? Let's go 32 font size. We're looking good. Now, uh, what we gotta do here is test for the first day of the month. So here's what we're gonna do to do that. We're gonna type the numbers one through seven right here. Let me show you why we're gonna do that because we can use a function called weekday and that takes a number and it tells us what weekday that is, okay? So uh, in this case, it doesn't do anything, it looks like, because these are still just uh, numbers. But if we go back up here, and here's another way to get to the uh, formats, if you click these little number buttons on your toolbar. If you go right here, um, let's go back to custom date and time in case it's not an option already for you. Click the day. I like the leading zero. That's not what we meant to do. <laughs> Let's click the day of the week. Uh, that's what we meant to do. So now it gives us Sunday through Saturday. That's really just to illustrate what weekday does because now we need to test for the first day of the month. And what we do for that is say, hey, if weekday January the 1st is equal to one, then hey, this must be January 1st. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now here's another formatting thing. We don't want this to be January. We want this to be the first day in number form. So here we can use this right here. And if that's not popping up for you, go to custom date and time, and then you can pick the day with the leading zero and apply it. Okay, so that's great because uh, January 1st started on a Sunday this year, but if it's next year, you know, all it's going to say is, hey, that's false. So what do we do if it's false? Well, if it's true, we enter B1. If it's false, we enter an empty string. So nothing displays there. Uh, let's go back to our February example to prove that. So now nothing is there because uh, February 1st is not a Sunday. All right, let's put it back on January. All right, now we need to test for a couple things. So not only do we need to say, hey, is weekday, is weekday of B1 equal to C2? And you know, if it is, then here's where we enter B1, because now that must be the first day of the month. But if that's not the case, I need to do another if statement. Now I need to look back at yesterday. I need to look at Sunday, which in this case was the first day of the month. And I wanna say, hey, if that is equal to an empty string, then this also is an empty string. Otherwise, be four plus one. Now we can take this and we can just drag this over, control or command R, we'll copy that over to the right. So we've got our first line. This is now going to correctly identify which weekday is in fact the first day of the month. So there it is for February. Let's go back, put January in here. And let's test a couple more things. Um, while we're here, let's, uh, let's first do a couple more formatting things just so that it'll make copying down easier. So I'm gonna put a bottom 
line there and you can't see it because I haven't done this yet. Let us get grid lines off. And one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have this as kind of my format for each cell. So now because I've got 150 across for each column and these are 30 each, it's a perfect square. And let's grab these colors that are nicer to use. We'll make it nice and thick. And there we go. We actually need six sets of these rows. We could actually use this sixth line if, if the first day of the month is on a Saturday. All right, for the next little bit here, we just add one to everything. So I'm gonna add one to there, add one to here, control R that over, and then copy this whole thing. Boom, boom. But now these last two lines, this is where we can potentially begin seeing the end of the month. So we need to start testing for that. In that case, I'm going to use the text function. So I'm gonna say, hey, if text of this day plus one in month format, so that's looking at the 28th plus one, so that's looking at the next day, if the next day is in this month, so if, if that text is equal to the text of B1 in month format, then this must still be in the month. So then I'm going to add H19 plus one. And if it's not, then this needs to be an empty string also. I'll show you what that text function does right here to the side real quick, in case you're confused at all. So that looks at here, and then it puts it into a different format. So if you have uh, 1M, it puts it 1 for January, 01 for January, Jan for January, or what we're doing, we're just testing month as the full name. So that puts it in that format, and then it puts, as you see here, B1 in that format also. And in fact, I'm gonna lock that uh, column in place so that we can drag this over in a second too. If text of this guy plus one in that month format is equal to text B1 in that same format, then we're gonna do B24 plus one. Same thing, I can actually drag it over now. Okay, and check that out. So it's successfully seeing that 31st is the last day of the month and it's just doing an empty string right here. And I think we can drag or we can copy and paste this whole thing right down here. And of course I was wrong because I held something in place that I should not have. So this is actually B1 still, and then this is B1 still, and now I can copy this over, okay. We got January. So to do February, uh, I mean, we're quite simply going to copy January because we got the formatting, we got most everything the way that we want it. We're gonna copy and paste down here. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see that. And um, we could put February 1st right here and things should work, but I don't really wanna do that. I would like it to just automatically calculate by doing e-date. And this is going to just specify a date a number of months after a certain date. So we're going to go B1, which was January 1st, and we're going to click one month, and that will give me February 1st. Okay, so everything else in here should be coming over correctly. We can examine it, and we've got, yes, the 28th of February is correctly pulling up down there. All these things copied over like I wanted it to. Let's do it one more time and see if March does everything for us now that we've got that end date in place. It did. July should begin on a Saturday and check it out. We're using that sixth row for July. And in December, we may run into some issues. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that. So it's saying the year is 1899 for that cell. That's super weird, right? So let's fix it. Instead of just checking on December for the month, we're gonna check for the year also. So I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna do and, so both of these things have to be true. 
So this and statement inside of here, I want this to be tested, and then I want this to be tested. Zoop. All right, so now we're testing both month and year. And we're going to do the same thing right here. This out. I'm going to do an and statement. I'm going to put that back in. And then I'm going to put this in. Put the years in here. Copy that over. We should be good to copy this whole line now. And cross your fingers. It didn't work. So it should be B375 right here and right here. 375. And we'll change it once more manually before copying it over. Now that should fix it. Okay, so that's the only quirk that I've found is on December. We will have to the last two lines. Just make sure the month and the year check out okay. Now let's scroll up here and let's just, uh, you know, let's do 2025 just to see if everything works out like we wanted it to. Wednesday is the first day of the month. The last day of January is the Friday. Then February starts on Saturday. That's good. Looking good. Saturday to Monday. All right, let's scroll all the way down. December and December is behaving correctly. Hey, uh, calendar for 2025. Let's just go ahead and uh, make sure December 31st is a Wednesday and it's a Wednesday here too. We're good. Um, last thing I'll do is I'll make all these the same row heights. Actually, that's not the last thing I'm gonna do because I promised you some conditional formatting. So we're gonna do that after we do these row heights. Okay, so we got good row heights for the titles of our months. You know what I, I forgot to do? I'm going to fix this manually and speed it up real quick because I do want to use a different font. Cool. So now we got the uh, better font pairing there. Uh, last step we're going to do is apply some conditional formatting. So on these days right here, you know, I don't want them to look like that. I want them to be just kind of dark, blacked out type of situation. So let's come in here and let's select this whole first row. Conditional formatting. Custom formula. And in here we're going to say B4. And we're going to lock the 4. Is empty. So if that's empty, then I'm going to do the font and the background the same color. Anytime that changes, it's going to black out everything except the first day of that month. Pretty cool. Because I've got multiple lines in each of these cells for creating things on new lines like this, uh, we do have to do that conditional formatting as a new rule down here on the last two lines. So a bit of a nuisance, but we only have to set it up once. So on B24 through H28, I'm going to do that same custom formula. And there it is. And then for this one, add another rule. And there we go. Hope this has been helpful for you. Hope you learned maybe something new. And if you would like the calendar that we used, the link for that is in the description below. Enjoy your spreadsheeting. Hope you have a great one. You're awesome.